2017 Nobel Prize in Physics was awarded to three gentlemen who contributed to the discovery of the gravitational wave. Gravitational wave is what Einstein predicted back in 1916. But even after 100 years, it was so difficult to discover this. Gravitational wave is about space, or space in the universe, stretching back and forth that goes like a wave through space, and that is called the gravitational wave. It sounds a very strange idea, so where I have to begin explaining what actually gravity is, and then talk about what the wave of gravity is really about. So gravity, if you think about it, what comes to your mind is probably an apple falling from a tree. So there is a law that Newton discovered the theory of gravity by watching an apple falling from a tree. He came up with this idea that the Earth, the planet Earth, and an apple are pulling towards each other by the universal force of gravity. According to this idea, any body with mass will pull towards each other, and that's the gravity. But if you take this idea from Newton, there was a puzzle nobody could really explain. So there's another experiment which is famous, is what Galileo went up on the Leaning Tower of Pisa and dropped two objects, one heavy and one light, together. And what happened? Heavy object and light object actually went together. And people were very surprised to see this, because everybody thought heavy object would go faster than light object. And Newton's idea doesn't quite explain why. And that's why Einstein had to actually think very hard about what exactly gravity is. And it turned out, according to Einstein, gravity is about our space bending, stretching, and vibrating. And that's the idea of gravity, according to Einstein. So I'd like to demonstrate this to you using a sheet and a ball. So this black sheet is the space in our universe. This tennis ball is the planet Earth. And this little ball is an apple. When I place this tennis ball on the space, which is the black sheet, the sheet bends down. And then if I bring this apple next to it, an apple gets pulled towards the tennis ball. Apple falls to the planet Earth, also from this direction, also from that direction, and from this direction too. Now, if you compare an apple with some heavy object together, they are pulled towards the Earth because of the bending of space. So it doesn't matter what object you bring together, because the bending of space is pulling them towards the planet Earth. So everything falls together, and that was the explanation by Einstein why heavy object and light object will fall together in Galileo's experiment. Now imagine then, you introduce this planet Earth all of a sudden into the space. Then what happens is this. Let me do that again. This sheet goes back and down, so it vibrates. And that actually goes through the sheet, namely space, just like a wave. Right? That is the gravitational wave. Bending of space goes through space like a wave. Now, the discovery that was awarded the Nobel Prize this year was about actually not the planet Earth and Apple, but about black holes. Black hole is an astronomical object with such a strong gravity that even light cannot escape. So no matter how hard you try, you cannot see a black hole with any telescope of any kind. But the idea is the black hole has such a strong gravity, it bends the space very much. What they observed is one black hole 
another black hole circling around each other. When the black holes actually go around each other, the space gets wobbled and go up and down. And as they go faster and faster, and eventually become one black hole in the end, after a merger, space wobbles so much that it can go through space over millions of light years that eventually come to a planet Earth. And then what happens to a planet Earth is that it stretches and shrinks like this. So that's the idea of gravitational wave. But then, how did these people actually observe stretching and shrinking of space coming to a planet Earth? The device they used to observe the stretching and shrinking of a planet is called LIGO, Laser Interferometry Gravitational Wave Observatory. It is an L-shaped object, but it's actually a very big one. Each stretch is four kilometers long. You have one stretch, four kilometers long, another stretch, four kilometers long. And when the gravitational wave comes towards the planet Earth, so that it actually shrinks and, and stretches, what happens to this L-shaped LIGO is that it actually does things like this. Stretches one side, shrinks the other side, and, and back and forth like this. And this is arranged in a way that you can see this stretching and shrinking, even though how tiny it is, it can actually observe that. The idea is the following. Along one side, you send light back and forth. Also on the other side, you send light back and forth. And you actually bring those two sides together to form a single light coming out of it. And it is arranged in such a way that light coming back and forth this way, if nothing is happening to it, has a wave of light like this. And going this way, you have a wave of light that is like that. And when you put them together, they exactly cancel against each other so that nothing would come out of it. So that's the idea. But if this side stretches a little bit, and if that side shrinks a little bit, offset by a little bit, so they don't cancel exactly anymore. So something will be left over. And that's what they observe. That's the way you can see the stretching and shrinking of space by light coming out of this LIGO detector. The amount of stretch and shrinks, though, is incredibly tiny. The whole planet stretches and shrinks by a distance even smaller than the size of an atom. It's an incredibly small effect, but this LIGO detector was so sensitive that it could observe this stretching and shrinking uh, by using this light bouncing back and forth. So that was the discovery. So there are two major surprises about this discovery. One, they managed to see this tiny, tiny stretching and shrinking of space. That's an incredible technological feat. But second thing is that now that they can see this stretching and shrinking of space, they can observe things no telescopes could do so far like black holes going around each other. In 2017, this LIGO team also discovered another kind of object circling around each other called neutron stars. And when neutron stars circle around each other and eventually collapse and merge together, it is believed that this merger of neutron stars is what produced precious metals like gold, silver, and platinum, you might like them. Maybe gold came from there. And by observing the circling uh, neutron stars, they actually managed to say, OK, that happened in that direction. And they could point telescope in that direction and see something actually happening over there. So by doing a study like this one, we may eventually really do learn that the gold, silver, and platinum really came from this circling neutron stars. So gravitational wave now became a tool or new eyes to the universe that you can see things you couldn't see before. Actually, in Japan, people are building another gravitational detector called Kagra. And a new gravitational wave detector called Virgo is already operating in Europe.
you might think, well, they have discovered gravitational wave already. Why you bother building more facilities like this one? Well, it turns out that this is actually a very good idea. Think of this planet Earth. Here's the US and Europe and Japan. So it's like three opposite directions on our planet. So if you actually observe this stretching and shrinking of space coming from one direction, the Earth goes like this. But with the three points, you can do a triangulation to tell, OK, that happened over there. Then you can tell all the other observatories around the world to point telescope in that direction to see you can observe what's actually happening over there. So this is the way gravitational wave becomes a new tool to observe the universe in a way we couldn't imagine doing anymore. So that's the discovery of gravitational wave. So more excitement are supposed to come from this. And that's why they deserved 2017 Nobel Prize in physics. Mm -hmm.